Hey everybody, this is Eric Warrior, and welcome to NetworkMarketingPro.com. I'm here in Washington, D.C., the iconic. Can you see the White House in the background? Can you see the Capitol building in the white ground? Can you see the, 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 the uh, Lincoln Memorial in the background? No, you can't. And the reason why you can't is because the, the direct selling association office is right over there, and we're running and gunning, getting this documentary done. And my buddy, Brian Carruthers, uh, one of the true studs of the network marketing profession, lives close to here and, and uh, since he's going to be at GoPro Recruiting Mastery in November, I wanted him to come over and uh, chat a bit, throw the camera, turn the camera on, chat a bit, talk about his book, Building an Empire, the most complete blueprint to building a massive network marketing business, great book. Um, but Brian, how much have you earned now and how, many, how long have you been building in your company right now? 15 years. 15 years and how much have you earned? 15 million. $15 million. My team has made $330 million. Your team has made $330 million. You've made 15. Yeah. That's a pretty good trade. Yeah, yeah. Help your team make $330 million and you get to make 15. Yeah. All right, so about a million dollars a year yeah. on average. Um, so you've had some years bigger than that, I'm, I'm sure. But, um, you know, the ebbs and flows of our business. But I saw something online. You recently did a recruiting boot camp, right? Yes. I saw something online that said you'd recruited 10 people a month for how long? 10 years. Straight? Yeah. Did you hear what he just said? Or what we said together? He's recruited 10 personally sponsored distributors per month for 10 straight years. Some months were better. I've had 20 and 30 months, but on average 10 at least. I want you to think about what would happen to your business if you figured out a way to personally sponsor 10 brand new people a month, every month for the next 10 years, what would happen to your business? Do you think your chances of earning bigger income like Brian uh, uh, is able to earn would improve? I think the answer would be yes. Some people that are watching would be, would be really, really happy to sponsor 10 people a lifetime. <laughs> right, right. Lifetime. Then you got the 10 people in a year group, you know, 10 people in five years group. And then, you know, but 10 people a month. Talk to people about how, I'll brag about you for a second, is one of the most disciplined, dedicated, consistent uh, workers when it comes to talking to brand new people. What do you think is your key to success when it comes to doing that? Um, I think it all comes down to leadership and just leading by example. You know, I want, I want to do what I want my team to do. So. If I go out and recruit 10 people and then just do nothing but work with them and stop recruiting, they're going to see me working with them, but they don't see me doing what the activity that I want them to follow. So that's why, you know, do I need to keep on recruiting? Uh, no, I mean, I can, I've can. i got a very significant income that comes in even if I stop recruiting. Right. But I think one of the reasons why my team has grown to over 400,000 people around the, around the country now is because they keep on seeing the guy who's doing the talking, the training, doing the activity. I'd rather watch a leader than to listen to one any day. So that's kind of my philosophy is just keep on staying in the trenches. If I recruit somebody, I want to be in their living room doing a home presentation. I want to be doing their conference calls for them. I want, I want to do, I, I think people just want a, a mentor or a leader that they can actually count on being able to model the right activity. So some people, when they get to a certain level of success, they find themselves, as you said, pulled to support functions, you know, they're they're supporting the team, they're calling the people on the team, they're doing calls for the team, they're doing three-way calls for the team, they're doing meetings for the team, traveling in to, to do a special event for the team. How do you avoid that management mode? You know, for example, what percentage of your, how many hours per day do you spend in prospecting, following up, Close and getting started of, of your brand new people. I mean, it's all by design. I mean, I have a chat had chapter on it where I divide my time up into four quadrants. Which 25, chapter? 25, 25, 25. It, uh, you I'll know, find it. Go ahead. So it's uh, it's probably going to be back here in a, in a managing uh, you know managing your business somewhere, but it's it's all about you know making sure that you are yes supporting your team, but I'll, I'll give it to you real quick. 25% of my time is talking to new prospects. Yep. 25% is talking to existing pro prospects in follow-up mode. 25% yep. is talking to my downlines prospects, helping them close their people. 
And then the final 25% is dealing with my team, promoting a conference call, promoting an event, promoting a company So you promotion. just basically, you create a system for it. It's, it's all by design. You know, people just So don't... say it again, 25, for your, so think about doing this, splitting up your business in 25% chunks. Right. And would, you, would it be that, it probably not, that's for a mature leader. If, if you're just starting off, it's gonna be probably 100%, 100%. talking to prospects. Close to 100%, yeah. If you have anybody in your team, you'll probably spend a little bit each time each right. day, maybe 5%. But as it matures, most people just swing all the way to support. They, so they, they swing to 75% support. Yep, yep. So, so talk about the 25, 25, 25, okay. 25. Well, it's all about IPA, income producing activity. All I care about is making money in this business. Now, I have fun. We love helping people and all that, but this is a business. So I want to model what I want my team to do. If they're not making money, they're not going to stick around. So. 25% looking for new prospects, 25 following up on old prospects, 25 helping my team talk to their prospects, which is 75% in income producing activity. The IPA means you're talking to a prospect with a chance of signing somebody up and making money. The 25% in support mode, when you go beyond that, you're actually really transferring too much over into support mode. And again, I, you know, the reason why I like to recruit a lot of people every month is because when I can recruit people and I can place them down and reward people on my team that are doing the activity and say, hey, look, yep. if you'll support this person and you're doing the work, I'll give you the recruit. So I recruit them, but I don't, ta I don't have, you know, 1,400 people front line. You know, I've got only a handful of legs. Some companies will allow you to do that. Some won't. Sure. But how many legs do you have, different lines of sponsorship do you have that are producing? I have at 11, some level, I have eleven that are at the top position, and I have another twenty that are at uh, at other levels. So you have uh, you know thirty thirty to forty, right? Somewhere in that range that are producing something, right? Okay, yeah. so um, I will tell you the 25, 25, 25, 25, That alone is worth the book. How much is the book? Seventeen. Seventeen dollars. Seventeen dollars for fifteen did, years worth of experience. You, know, the, the you should get your hands did, on it. Um, where, where can they get the book? buildingandempirebook.com buildingandempirebook.com I'll put the link below get your hands on it if you like GoPro this is another something to put in your arsenal you know you can read GoPro 500 times and I'm glad you do or listen to it all that stuff but listen to way, this awesome book awesome thank you book. thank you um, there aren't very many great books in the profession this is what what Brian did it's different than GoPro what Brian did is he just basically took everything 20 that years, 20 years, that he'd learn and everything and all, yeah. And tried to put it as much as possible in here. So it's kind of, um, it's not going to be as quick of a read, but it's something that you can study. Pick a chapter, study it, implement it, put it into practice, pick another chapter, study it. Or maybe sometimes some of you leaders are looking for content for your next training talk. You know, pull up to here and briefing meeting etiquette. You just pull open to that and you can say, okay, here's the etiquette of a meeting. And here's the key points to focus on. And you've got a training talk for your next event. Um, you open up to another thing of fear of success. That's an issue for, for some people. You can have a, a talk about that on your next conference call. It's filled with those types of things. So, uh, Brian, you're also going to be coming and speaking at GoPro Recruiting yep. Mastery. Yep. Looking forward to uh, and I'm telling you, dude, the, the lineup of people, including yourself, that are going to be speaking there is continuing to get amazing and more amazing and more amazing there's uh, there's a few that I can't announce yet they don't want me to announce yet so I'm not announcing but I really want to I'm thrilled that you that you that you asked me to come um, and I'm lo I, I, I'm excited about sharing but just knowing who you already have yeah I've got I got two notepads I got my pen <laughs> I mean as you know I mean at, at the last two I can't ever right. do I'm in one of the front rows and I'm yep. taking notes the entire time I'm not in the back hanging out with the cool guys that are all making seven figures a year right I want to go to seven figures a month and that's the only way I'm gonna do that is by getting in front of the people you're getting us in front of yeah so, so t you, you you as a person who has a large organization some people get a little bit nervous about introducing their downline to a, an event that's not just a company event right how did you kind of navigate that concern yourself and what are your thoughts on it when it comes to this event at the moment sure I mean look um, a few years ago when I was kind of coming out of my personal company's cocoon where I spent 15 years just inside of that cocoon didn't really I knew what was going on out there in, in, in the uh, in the profession but didn't really spend much time out there um, came out to your event a couple years ago where you asked me to come out and talk about cold market recruiting and um, got a chance to make a whole lot of new friends and and got a chance to learn from different perspectives and it, uh, and it, and it helped me and frankly, uh, I want people from my team to come to the event that you're, that you're putting on just because, you know, the profit's never heard in his own backyard. You know, 
for the most part, I would imagine that most of my team that's been with me for a year, three years, five years, 15 years, they can't hear me anymore. They want to hear me. They're trying to listen, but they don't hear it. They need to hear from the other people you're putting a new on stage. Voice, yeah. yeah, a new voice. And so, you know, I, I tell them, read the book, read the book. Everything 15 years is in, in the book. You know, and they, and they read the book. Sense. But the people who like my book even more are the people outside of the company that haven't heard the information like that before. So I'm just, I'm telling you, you know, get your team to the event. Uh, I'm, uh, again, I'll say hi to you. I'll be front row. Uh, don't make noise behind me because I don't want any distractions. Right. So How, how, uh, um, how did you feel as far as safety, no distractions type of a thing? You know the concern that people would try to recruit other people or whatever in the room. You know, it, you know, obviously it's 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 always probably in people's back of people's minds. I imagine. Uh, for me, at this last event, I can tell you that I, it wasn't really going on in my mind. You know, right. everybody was there with the intent to go learn. If everybody's coming in to learn and they're not coming in to recruit, because you know, you, you, first of all, people karma always gets everybody, and reputation is all you got. And if you have a bad reputation in the industry, you're not gonna you're not gonna go far. And, it, and it, it, time exposure promotes everybody. So if you go into an event and you try to recruit somebody, whether you do or you don't succeed at it, you're gonna be blackballed and you're not gonna be able to come back and, and, and everybody's gonna hate you. So if somebody really wants to go far, they gotta not be short-sighted. They need, a, they need to look beyond an event and beyond a couple people that are in a room. Yep. Come to learn. Right. Well, Brian's going to be one of the people teaching. So if you're coming to learn, he's going to be one of the people teaching. If you'd like to get similar results to what he's been able to enjoy, come and listen to that. Also, get your hands on the book, Building an Empire, buildinganempirebook.com, or click on the links to get your hands on it. Um, Brian, I appreciate the fact that you continue to lead by example. Uh, I appreciate our friendship. And one of the really good guys in the profession, works with a great company with a lot of great people. But uh, I, I've really appreciated the friendship. Absolutely. All right, See so that's soon. our show. And ladies and gentlemen, our wish for you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional. You decide to go pro because it is a stone cold fact that we have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day. August 11th, get yourself uh, registered for the last few tickets to go pro recruiting mastery. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. See ya.